Our first speaker this morning has prioritized increasing access to broadband, especially in rural America. The United States Department of Agriculture Secretary Sonny Perdue developed his knowledge of agriculture the old-fashioned way. He was born into a farming family. Secretary Perdue is a former farmer, ag businessman, veterinarian, state legislator, and governor of Georgia. He became the 31st U.S. Secretary of Agriculture in 2017. We are honored to have him here with us today. Please join me in welcoming Secretary Sonny Perdue. Greg, guess what I just did? I hope you put the test Backstage while you were talking, I just downloaded Tested, so I hope you all did too. So, uh, good. If you don't have children or grandchildren to help you, Greg will help you, okay? Welcome, everybody. How y'all doing today? That's uh, Georgian for a good morning. Uh, and it's good to be back with you all. I uh, very much appreciate the opportunity. But I got a question. Why are y'all here? Let me rephrase that. Why do you do, why did you put yourself through this, if you know what I mean? I bet you all weren't sitting around bored and just said, think I'll run for the county leadership position, right? You, uh, you had family, you had civic responsibilities, you were probably busier than most people in your community, and yet you're here representing the leadership of your county trying to do what? improve the lives of your local communities and improve the lives of the people that live there. And that's essentially the bedrock of democracy. That's, uh, that's what makes us all work. I want to tell you, I'm an admirer of local government. I'll tell you in a little bit how I got my start there, but I'm an admirer of local government and, and what it does. If we think about in the metaphor of a building, local government is the foundation of the building structure. If you don't have that, the, the shiny, wonderful Capitol building down the street here is a wonderful edifice, but that building doesn't work without you all across this great country doing what you do every day for the altruistic reason to make your communities better. And for that, I applaud you for doing that. I want to thank you for doing what you do. When I was governor, I'd have some of your colleagues in Georgia come up to me and say, oh, I bet your job is so stressful. And, uh, you know, thank you for doing what you do. And I said, wait a second. I live in a nice, some of the nicest public housing in Georgia. Uh, and it has a fence around it. It has guards with guns there. Your people know where you live, and they can come get you, and they see you in the grocery store. You've got the stressful job, and that's really the way I believe about that as far as we build up the foundation, and usually there's a lot less on top of the ground than there is in the foundation. So from that standpoint, I just want to express a real admiration for what you do to make your, your communities better. That's why we do all through the levels of, of government, where local, state, or federal, I believe. And President Trump, I think, tried to express it with his slogan, make America great again. You can say, we want to make our counties great. Most, most of you probably believe that your, your communities are already great. And, and you just want to make them better, because if you thought other people could do it better, you wouldn't have run. But you ran because you want to make them better. And that's what makes our nation uh, great and we want to continue to do that so we want to thank you all for what you do and you ought to give yourselves an applause you know and not only i but i think again all these things are true about why and what you do but i'm, I'm very fascinated as i said i was i was governor for eight years i never had the kind of access to the federal administration level the way you all have had and uh, frankly, it's a real pleasure to, uh, to know that we have a president who invites county commissioners from every state across this nation to, uh, to the White House and to express your opinion and to, uh, and to let 
us know in the administration what are those ground issues that you're dealing with on a day-by-day -day basis? What are the impediments? If you want to make something better, you got to diagnose what are the reasons why we don't get better. And that's what we depend on you all uh, to do. And I want to thank you for what, uh, what you do in that regard. And thank you for coming. Again, I've, uh, I was able to participate in several of these uh, county meetings, and we talked about different things. Greg talked about some of the things that uh, the Farm Bill, some of the things that USDA has to do with, uh, uh, with local governments. And uh, we have a partnership, obviously, that Congress gives us resources to, uh, uh, to provide and to allocate out for communities over water and water treatment issues and other things. And uh, he mentioned broadband, and I want to talk about that more in a minute because that's really important. And uh, we can have a real partnership uh, going on with the, the test it program across this country. But I want to thank, uh, thank you. My, uh, my career, I think I may have told you this last time, but my career in politics began in one of those uh, unelected, uh, appointed, non-paid jobs um, back in 1990, no, 1980, uh, when the county commissioned uh, commissioners asked me if I would be willing to serve on the planning and zoning board. Mm. <laughs> and I remember very vividly, they said uh, when they asked, you don't have any political ambitions, do you? I said, no, I really, and I really didn't. I didn't have any. And uh, they said, good, with this job, you won't need any. So uh, you all know what I'm talking about. But uh, you, uh, you folks in the elected positions were the ones that had to make the final decision. I had the, just the, the benefit of being a recommender, listening to the facts of both sides and recommending to the elected officials of our county. Uh, and we were in a, a rapidly transitioning uh, from agrarian county to a suburbanizing commercial county there. And that creates a lot of tension uh, many times between what we want. But what I learned was it was the best experience I could ever have for any type of elected office. It taught me how to listen. And what we saw colliding oftentimes was the, the precious uh, constitutional rights that we have in this country over the right to own land and the right to own property and to have a uh, possession in a, in a way that we feel like we're owners. We're really just stewards, we know that, but we feel like we own it. And then the, the, the tension with the community good. I can do with my property most everything I want as long as it doesn't affect my neighbors, whether it's odors or different things or structures or these kind of things. And that's what we battled with all the time. And it taught me to listen how, how proud we were of our communities and our neighborhoods and our properties in that way. And that's what you deal with. And that's what the challenge is. Sometimes it's good and sometimes it really brings challenges in your community. How do you balance those tensions in those areas? One of the other things I was talking with your leadership downstairs is I want to, I have a vision at USDA. You all have a broad swath of counties from size wise. One of your uh, members downstairs, your leadership was from Los Angeles County. That's a nice little small community. And, uh, and yet we have some probably with counties with under 200 residents possibly that way. And so how do we, how do we bridge that? How can at a federal level of USDA help to bridge that, to, uh, that urban rural divide, which I believe is becoming uh, more and more exacerbated as we, uh, as we go from one to the other. Uh, I'm having a teleprompter up here go wild on me. Y'all can just cut it off because I know I'm going off script and you can't follow me anyway, so it's probably more distracting than anything else. So uh, uh, sometimes I just want to say what I want to say and not what they write for me, okay? Uh, but anyway, uh, I, I would love to, I'd love to work with the NACO and, and counties at all levels have come together and see the common challenges that we have, see the common benefits we can have in really bridging urban-rural divide. And what you all have done through this app and through your, your program called Test It can be immensely popular 
and, uh, and, and helpful, not just popular, but helpful in getting on the ground results. We know, and I, I, I told that uh, your group downstairs, your leadership, that these uh, data maps that we have over coverages, uh, uh, basically, basically coming from the incumbent carriers there, I don't think are quite accurate. And uh, I think you all can be very, very helpful with the data nationwide, with all your counties nationwide, to report in. And I've got a contact in USDA because those unserved areas and underserved areas are exactly what we're looking for. Because I think we all can agree, and I grew up in a, uh, in a small community in, uh, in middle Georgia where rural electrification had only come about 10 years prior to my birth. Think about that. Now think about how much we depend on it right now. In fact, my grandchildren go bazonk if they don't have chargers and electricity, you know, and, and to charge all the things that we have to do. But I believe, and I think you all believe, that broadband, ubiquitous broadband from the major cities to the smallest hamlets is the rural electrification of the 21st century. If we're, if we're gonna, if we're gonna connect one another, both rural, urban, suburban, and for the benefit of our great country, I think it's gonna require connectivity. It would be uh, certainly from our rural constituency in precision agriculture, smaller footprint, doing more with less, less inputs, more, more outputs, and those kind of things. The sociological aspects, it's, uh, you've probably got uh, kids in your county and some of your smaller counties uh, driving to town maybe 10 or 15 or 20 or 50 miles, 20 miles in to do their homework, maybe in a parking lot of, uh, of, of a barred Wi-Fi uh, service. Think about that. Think about the creativity and ingenuity if we could get broadband to every home, every hamlet, every field across America by whatever technology. I'm technology ag agnostic. We don't want, I'm not, I'm not smart enough to know what's the best or what's gonna move. There. These things are always done, but we need it and we need it now, sooner rather than later. So I'm working hard to persuade the administration that we need a moonshot for ubiquitous broadband across the United States of America, everywhere you go. The other thing we're working on from an interagency perspective is working together. Uh, I know on one of our Back to the Roots tour in Lima, Ohio, uh, we, uh, uh, Secretary uh, McMahon or Administrator McMahon of the Small Business Administration, when we realized we had a lot of commonality and a lot of common customers, she and I were on this tour together talking to businesses, whether they were small uh, communities or larger communities, how the USDA and small business wanted to work together to make their communities more prosperous and, and better. Those are the kind of things that matter. Following me is going to be Secretary Carson of HUD. And you think about the high housing and urban development, but those lines blur. You've seen some of your counties transition from a, a, a rural or agrarian to a urban or suburban center here. And, and how do those match? We're working together on common policies and protocols and rules and regulations of when those things change, how do we work together? That's what we're trying to do at the federal level to give your citizens more clarity. I believe clarity leads to compliance. We want our citizens to comply with our ordinances and our rules and our regulations. Well, let's make them clear so they know how to, com uh, how to, uh, co how to uh, coordinate and and, and, and comply with what we're asking them to do. And that's what we want to communicate to you as a federal government. We want to be on your side because as I said, our building doesn't get bigger, doesn't get better without a strong foundation. And that's what uh, we firmly believe that we want to do. So not only can we work together to remove some of those federal barriers, we can work together uh, along with other uh, federal agencies as well as state agencies to help build a uh, rural, to solve the rural urban divide. I am very enthused. There's a lot of energy about broadband within the state governments. We, the governors were here last week and uh, 
We talk with almost every one of them about a real intense effort over broadband connectivity. And uh, certainly that comes down to your communities. We are, uh, we are funding right now Congress appropriated money and we will begin taking applications really, I think around the end of April over a reconnect program. So I hope if, you're, if your communities, uh, be they public, private or whatever, uh, would check that out. There's say about $600 million we're gonna deploy uh, about 200 in grants, 200 in loan grant combinations, and 200 in grant combinations to prove the concept of how we can deploy broadband across the country. So I want to thank you for what you do locally and this, this inner, inner communication. And that's why the president invited uh, both state and local officials. I've never seen the access that any administration has ever given uh, to uh, the cabinet and to others as you all have been given here. So we, uh, uh, we want to encourage you to do that. And we want to thank you for what for participating in, the, in these events. I hope it's been helpful. And we're serious when we want to know your ideas about how we can make the lives of your people better because that's why you're here. Collectively, we literally all serve the same citizens. So as I look across the room today and uh, downstairs, I, I see people from small communities and mega metropolitan counties. And when we look at what we experience, what we do and the people we serve, it, it's obvious that uh, we can make a bigger difference. And that's why you did what you did initially in the lives of each and every citizen of yours and every American if we work together than if we don't. And that doesn't mean women in, in our county, in our state, obviously, it's amazing how little uh, attention gets to partisanship rather than solving problems on the local level. You ever notice that? You don't find these great ideological battles most of the time at the local level. You just got problems to solve and you're too busy trying to solve problems than fight about partisan or ideological issues. And I, uh, I would frankly covet you sharing that, okay? So, uh, so we rightly identify, I think, appropriately with our local communities, but also do see a larger picture. And the truth is, uh, frankly, large or small counties, state, federal, we're really all Americans. And one of our founding fathers, Thomas Paine, said that our citizenship in the United States is our national character. Our citizenship in any particular state is only our local distinction. By the, better, by the latter, we are known at home, by the former to the world. Our great title is Americans. So thank you, great Americans. Yes, we are. And the Americans who lead your communities in governing those governments that are closest to the people and I think most affected. As Secretary of Agriculture, I want to be your friend and your partner in helping your citizens have a better life. Thank you all very much. God bless you.